Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day so far at the Dam and Museums event. Um, and today I'd like to welcome you to Diving into Dam, Finding and Implementing an Organization-Wide System at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. If you wanted to hear from the Rijks Museum, uh, go and join track number one. Um, don't forget to type your questions into the Q&A box should be on your right hand side, hopefully I'm pointing the right direction uh, at any point throughout this session. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speakers, Alexis Crabtree and Jamie Fogel, joining us live uh, and in person from Moat Marine Laboratory <laughs> and Aquarium. Over to you. Thanks, Hi. Christina. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Jamie, you want to present the... Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Again, my name is Alexis, and I'm the Manager of Visual Engagement here in the Communications Department at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Uh, shortly, starting, uh, shortly after starting at Moat about eight years ago, I established Moat's first dam system for photos and other visual assets um, here at Moat. Um, and really quick note, I'm recovering from a respiratory infection, so I apologize in advance if I start coughing or I'm sipping tea throughout, so just bear with me on that. <laughs> Uh, and hi, I'm Jamie. Um, I started at Moat a little over a year ago, and I serve as the Library and Archives Director, and I'm responsible for the Library Catalog and the Archives Digital Collection site. Um, so real quick, for those of you who aren't that familiar with our organization, uh, Moat Marine Laboratory is a nonprofit marine science research institution with more than 20 different research programs spread across about five different locations here in Florida. Um, we study everything from megafauna like sharks and sea turtles to issues like ocean acidification and coral disease. Um, we also have a very robust education department and a public aquarium. In fact, we are currently in the process of building a brand new state-of-the-art aquarium, um, which we have dubbed Moat Science Education Aquarium, or Moat C for short. Um, even though our organization has so many diverse components, Jamie and I um, really wanted to find a digital asset management system that would work for our whole organization, um, and we're really looking forward to sharing our perspective with you and our story of how we've gone through that process and hope we find it helpful. Uh, just quickly before we begin, we want to acknowledge the Seminole Tribe of Florida, the Miccosukee, and other lost tribes on whose ancestral land Moat Marine Laboratory now sits, and we encourage everyone to share their own land acknowledgement in the chat. Um, so quick overview. Today we're going to tell you about our experience selecting a new digital asset management system for a whole organization and how we pitched that idea to our directors. We're going to touch on the due diligence we did ahead of time and how we ultimately got our stakeholder buy-in. Um, early on in the process. And then we'll walk you through a piece of our actual pitch presentation that we made to our leadership and the outcome of that pitch. Although, spoiler alert, um, we'll be wrapping up this presentation with a short update on how the implementation of our new system uh, has been going, including system setup, migration, training, and welcoming new users into the system. Uh, along the way, we'll try to point out a few takeaways that we've learned in the process. So let's dive in. Uh, so when I started at Moat and began to familiarize myself with the collections, I quickly discovered that the archives digital collections website was outdated and severely in need of an upgrade. Um, knowing that the archives and communications often share a lot of assets, I reached out to Alexis to learn about the systems that she was using. Um, and it turns out that the communications department was also starting to outgrow their current system. So we teamed up and um, as we continued our discussions, we realized that the need for a new digital asset management system was more than just a library or a communications need, but was really a larger organization might need. Uh, so then we did a lot of research, <laughs> um, you know, investigating different systems, you know, setting up and viewing demonstrations. Uh, we used a spreadsheet um, that helped us uh, like organize our notes about this different systems so we could uniformly compare them against the same criteria. Um, and that also helped us to clarify our priorities when it came to the essential functionalities of what we were looking for in a dam system. 
Uh, we narrowed down our options to a dam system when that seemed the best one to suit our needs, um, but it was quite a bit more expensive than the ones we had budgeted for our legacy systems, and we were worried that would be a bit of a deal breaker. Um, so we reached a point that we felt we needed our supervisors okay to continue pursuing this idea. So we created a one pager handout, um, which is something that both of our supervisors are big fans of uh, on the one pager, which you see um, pictured there. So basically we highlighted the goals of the project, the essential functionality that we were looking for in a dam system, the different systems that we had researched, and then lastly, why we felt that our top choice was the right software for us. Uh, our supervisors were on board and approved our request to have meetings with other departments um, to learn about how a unified dam system could specifically meet all of their different needs. Because um, after all, if there was a broader need, then a higher budget could, you know, higher cost could be justified and sourced from multiple budgets. Key point. <laughs> So we had meetings with many different departments across our organization to discuss their current setup and needs. Um, for example, what kind of assets do they produce? How do they share their assets? How do they currently find assets created by other departments and so on? Um, in these interviews, we really focused on their needs and uses, not as a vehicle for pitching our top choice software, but as a way to expand our own awareness um, of the status quo and to encourage engagement from our coworkers. Once they felt that we had heard and understood their specific challenges, uh, they were really open and receptive to the idea of implementing an organization-wide solution that would address both their needs and the needs of a whole, our whole organization. Um, looking back, I think we'd recommend that we do that you do that step earlier in the process than we did, since the feedback from other departments could and should influence your selection of a software. Um, in our case, it actually worked out that what we learned from our other departments at Moat about their needs aligned with the benefits offered by our top choice and furthered our belief in its viability. In any case, it was definitely a worthwhile process um, for us. We learned a lot about the many different ways that our coworkers utilize assets, and everyone we spoke to was really excited about the idea of a single system used across the whole organization. Um, and this buy-in from other departments actually proved invaluable from our next step, pitching to our executive director. So uh, we'll take a quick look at some of the slides that we used in our pitch to Dr. Crosby, who is Moat's executive director. Um, to begin with, since digital asset management isn't a familiar term to everyone, especially here at a marine science laboratory, um, we began by illustrating some of the assets that are needed, used, and shared here at MOPE. Um, then we put together this graphic to visually demonstrate how MOPE's many, many assets are currently spread through many, many different storage locations. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a hot mess. Uh, we touched on a few other points, including all of the growth outlined in Moat's strategic plan, and then discussed what the future would look like if we continued with our current systems. So we talked about that we would still need to find other systems um, to resolve the issues that we were facing, at least for the library, for communications, and especially for the new aquarium. Uh, then, of course, if we had different systems, that would mean we would continue to operate in silos, which would be harder to overcome as we continue to grow. We discussed the dangers that arise from disconnected systems, including duplication of efforts, um, inconsistency, confusion, brand disparity, and finally concluded this scenario with us failing to meet Dr. Crosby's directive for Moat to maintain our status as a world-class research institution. So with that scary scenario established, uh, we called back up this graphic to set the scene for the main pitch of our presentation, um, which we framed in the context of our strategic plan. We said in order to meet the vision that's laid out in our strategic plan, we're proposing a solution that would take us from this to this. <laughs> the juxtaposition of these two graphics really helped our executive director uh, visualize the core concept of a dam and how the one we were about to specifically propose could work for Moat's many, many needs. Um, so then next in the presentation, we shared a screenshot of our top choice dam software and walked him through our top five reasons why we felt this particular system stood out to us compared to the other systems that we had evaluated. 
In particular, we knew that this system's configurability would be key for Moat's needs, and we'll get into some details on that later. Um, but for the purposes of our pitch, we even worked with our vendor to mock up a screenshot of one of Dr. Crosby's favorite marketing photos. You can see it there in the corner, um, so that he had he could see how a Moat asset would appear in the system that we're proposing. Uh, next, to demonstrate that we had thought broadly about a wide variety of materials, we had prepared several examples comparing the current status of various digital assets that Moat produces and how our proposed DAM system would improve access and sharing. Uh, each of the screenshots here represent a slide in our original presentation. And finally, we concluded with the specifics of pricing. Uh, we wanted to talk about price last, hoping that by this point, our executive director would be so excited about the idea that he would feel it would, you know, that our solution would be worth any cost. Uh, and we even included this not so subliminal photo of him <laughs> giving us the thumbs up. Um, as we mentioned, our top choice stamp platform was more expensive than the ones that we had been using. So it was important that we came prepared with some plausible funding sources um, in our case, this included already budgeted funds, a pending grant application, and a potential donor. And I know you'll be surprised. Success! <laughs> uh, we were over the moon when our executive director, rather unexpectedly, um, gave us the green light right then right and there, there in the room. It's great. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. Um, but of course, that was only the beginning, because uh, now, now the journey really begins actually implementing the system. Um, so the rest of our presentation, we'll get into a little preview on just what we've been dealing with since that approval came through. So as you mentioned, um, one of the features that we were most excited about in our new system was its configurability. Um, with so many diverse needs and assets at Moat, uh, we needed that flexibility to meet the needs of all of our different user groups. Um, but that flexibility does come at a price. And in this case, that price was spreadsheets. Lots and lots and lots and lots of spreadsheets. Um, to set up our new system, we needed to identify user groups, permission settings, folder structure, all the custom metadata templates, controlled vocabularies, metadata ingest profiles, etc. And we use spreadsheets to keep track of all of that. Um, needless to say, it was a ton of work and a lot of files, um, but that's our advice from this stage um, is just to be patient and prioritize thoughtful planning up front. Um, we might feel impatient as we did at a few points um, because you just want the system up and running. Uh, but we ultimately found that the time we've invested so far um, has been worth it to take advantage of the system's configurability and to fully meet the needs of all of our users. So once we had our new system mostly configured, um, we were ready to start migrating our assets over from our legacy systems into the new system, which is very exciting. Um, however, this did prove quite the tricky process for all of the marketing assets that we were transferring, uh, because as it turns out, that legacy system didn't really have a practical way of exporting all of our assets. We ended up having to pay that company an additional fee to manually extract all of our assets from the legacy system folder by folder, and then ship them to us on an external hard drive. And then because of the way that legacy platform had been built, the collection of assets we received contained numerous duplicates and missing metadata. Luckily, this, the team at our new uh, system really stepped up and compensated for this deficiency by managing the migration for us. Um, for example, they created um, pro they programmed scripts that identified the duplicated assets and flagged the assets that were missing metadata for us. Um, we're still finalizing our controlled vocabulary list, and we're going to spend some time adding and adjusting our metadata to take full advantage of the features that our new system offers. Um, but the biggest takeaway we've learned from this part of the process is to just have an exit strategy. Um, this time around, we did make sure to discuss that protocol for extracting our assets and metadata um, with our new vendor. Obviously, we hope that that will be unnecessary for a very, very, very long time um, because we think our new vendor is really great and we're not planning to leave them anytime soon. But eventually, all things do change, right? So we don't want our successors to face the same challenges that we did. Um, so after we got our new STAM system um, set up and migrated most of our existing assets, we were ready to start inviting new users into the system. So now we'll go through a few examples um, that of things that we're doing to make sure that this next phase is as successful as possible. <coughs> to help brand the system and encourage its adoption, we decided early on to give the system a moat name rather than call it by its software name. Um, we named it Moat Clark, 
So CLARC is an acronym and it stands for Cyber Library for Accessible Resources and Knowledge and is an homage to MOAT's founding director, Dr. Eugenie Clark. Um, Dr. Clark was a pioneer in the field of marine science and continues to be an inspiration for generations of young scientists. She dedicated her life to the discovery of knowledge and dissemination of scientific information. Um, and we want the Clark system to emulate her example by providing digital access to scientific resources and furthering Moat's mission. Uh, Dr. Clark's decades of shark research earned her the nickname, the shark lady. Um, so Alexis designed the Clark logo to incorporate a shark's dorsal fin in place of the letter A. Uh, we hope that by associating the system with Dr. Clark, who's beloved by all Moat staff, um, that will really help, you know, build affinity and, um, yeah, with the staff as we move forward. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, another early decision that we made <clears throat> was to start building a, a governance plan from the get-go. Um, we used a free tool called Google Sites to create an internal governance website, which helped us keep track of the many decisions that we were making along the way that we mentioned earlier, um, and to brainstorm instructions for future administration of our site. So we began by documenting our initial configuration of the dam system, things like our moat specific um, metadata templates, our folder structure, user roles, things like that. Uh, but the idea is that over time, these configurations will, of course, be tweaked and eventually perfected, um, with each iteration being updated on this Google site so that it's a living governance policy for us and future dam admins. Um, we're also planning to form a governance uh, working group, um, which will help us vet and manage these anticipated changes to our policies and protocols, and also assist us with further phases of implementation. And um, we think that using the living website as the governance policy platform will help us ensure that it remains easily accessible and updatable. Um, we're also using Google Sites to create a training manual of sorts for our future Clark users. Um, like our governance site, this training site will also continue to evolve as the dam system, use of the dam system here at Moat expands, um, and also as the functionality of our selected dam software also expands. Um, we plan to develop videos and additional content to make it really a robust instruction manual and helpful resource for our future dam users. Um, and then just to be clear, our vendor will be supplying lots of training resources that cover general use of their system. Um, but this training site in particular is just intended to complement those resources by focusing on the mode specific aspects um, that are relevant to our everyday users, things like our folder structure and uploading guidelines. Throughout the whole process, we've tried to keep our staff informed either one on one or, th or through our staff listserv. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't lose that momentum and excitement that you know, we generated in those initial conversations. Uh, currently, only a select group of users are in the system, um, but our next steps will be to open the system for wider use by Moat staff. Uh, we're planning to stagger onboarding, training different groups, uh, different departments in turn. I'm starting with the heaviest users first. Um, and as we progress through each stage, increasing the number of user groups, we'll also expand the types of materials housed within the system. Starting small has given us an opportunity to work through some of the nuances of our new system and establish guidelines and processes that will help support us as we roll out the system to more of our coworkers and continue to expand the types of materials. Uh, in time, we plan to integrate it with our website as well as displays in the aquarium. Uh, this whole experience has really been an incredible learning opportunity, um, and we're really looking forward to what comes next. Amen. <laughs> so that's all we've got for you today. Um, we really want to thank everyone so much for attending. We hope we've provided some useful takeaways or things to think about as you work through your own damn, you know, solutions. Um, we'll stick around. I know we've got, I think, a few more minutes if anyone has questions. Um, but you can always feel free to email us if you have questions or if you just want to geek out about jam systems because always down for that right we're <laughs> like that so um, yeah thank you so much Thanks, guys great thank you so much alexis and jamie that was really fantastic and um i know there's a lot of detail behind what you just explained in a very short period of time so well done uh sounds like a very <laughs> successful implementation thus far so great job um we do have quite a few questions coming in um so i'll start 
kind of chronol um, chronologically in terms of kind of how you went through the selection process into implementation. So um, we've had a couple questions about how you initially engaged with stakeholders. So one question being, um, how do you engage with stakeholders who don't know much about DAM and who are relatively new to it? How did you get them started on this? Yeah, that's, um, we mentioned those meetings. We had meetings with 17 different departments here at Moat. Um, and we literally, we brought them into our library and we sat them down at the table and we said, you know, what do you, what kind of digital materials do you use? And for some groups that took some explaining, um, you know, to kind of clarify what, what is we consider a digital file versus not, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but for the most part, it was really like just having a conversation with them and, and focusing, asking them questions. And so we really focused on what do you use and just got them thinking about how they use digital files, where they store them. Um, yeah, and, how do you share it? Yeah, you know, how do you share got it? People, I use Dropbox, I've got Google Drive, I've got this. Mm -hmm. What this happens when, on that yeah. computer? <laughs> that, I don't know, it's in someone like. Um, yeah, what is, and also what is, what is not digital but should be or could be was another part of those conversations as well. Yeah, so. there's definitely like that's in Joe's filing cabinet, yeah. and you're like, oh, that's important. <laughs> yeah, know where that is, <laughs> and what happens when so and so leaves the organization, and does somebody else know how to access this file? So it was how do we engage the stakeholder? It was really just those conversations and getting them thinking about it, and then in, like through the course of that conversation, they became aware that we were thinking about this and trying to trying to look for a system that could actually help them, but also help the education department or the aquarium department or whatever, so. Yeah, and I will say question? it seems daunting. They're like, oh, 17 meetings, like, yeah. but it was, they were all really interesting. All of our yeah. conversations were very different from the previous <laughs> conversation. And so it was neat to like learn about the different ways that everyone works and the files that they work with and how they, I'll say muddle through and then yeah. we're like, we think we can make it better. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. And, and, you know, that stakeholder engagement is so important to bringing people along on the journey. I bet those people that you interviewed, um, they, they were probably a lot more excited about joining in and starting to use the dam um, or, or will be once you roll yes. it out to, to the wider group. Um, so they're going to be really excited because they'll think, well, you know what? I gave feedback initially that helped yes. to select the system and I'm so excited that it's now here. And actually something that we ended up realized cut from this presentation to make room for some updates on how our implementation has been going, but that actually really came into play for us in getting our Dr. Cosby's approval, our executive director's approval for the dam because he came into the meeting having heard from other people that there was an issue and that Jamie and Alexis were working on a solution. So um, it, it, we had kind of seeded the playing field unintentionally by having all these conversations with like the whole moat staff. Um, and so that actually was another benefit that uh, we've discovered along the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. So you actually time. engaged yeah. with the stakeholders before you went to pitch to. Right. We got our supervisor's approval and they said, yes, this seems like there's potential here. We would support you. So go ahead and start talking with other people, make sure your system would work for everyone else. And if not, we need to go back to the drawing board, but luckily we didn't need to. Um, and so that's when we started meeting with everyone. And we were really careful not to say that we had decided anything for sure. We were really careful to say that we hadn't gotten formal approval, but that this was just sort of an information fact gathering thing. But the nature of those conversations got everyone really excited and they brought it up to their supervisors who brought it up to Dr. Crosby. So um, that's kind of how it went down. <laughs> oh, I love that. I mean, that's amazing change management. So well done for, for doing that. Um, somebody has to ask a question about the IT department specifically, um, and we all love IT. So if anybody's here um, from the technical team, uh, hello to all of you. We love you. We <laughs> welcome you into the conversation. Um, and and uh, Kristen is asking um, about the IT department, but also just generally, did you have any departments that gave you any pushback? No, so I, the like, IT department was, of course, one of those conversations. That and we, we tried to see them first. Like we wanted to like make sure that we had them on board and that we were keeping what they knew that they would need in mind in terms of like 
digital infrastructure and, and yeah and RIT point. guys are like already stretched pretty thin we have two people for a 200 plus person organization so they are got their work cut out for them and we did yeah. not want to make it any harder for them so our particular system is is off-site it's cloud-based um so that there would be minimum burden on that on the IT department in our case so yeah that was one of our search criteria because like the the old archives digital collection site is actually hosted locally and I know that it's a pain so I was like let's pick something that <laughs> all right doesn't guys, burden you don't have to worry about it when yeah. it goes down and then specifically for IT as well once we had gotten Dr. Crosby sign off and we were moving forward with our particular vendor um we brought in our IT guys and the vendor together and said okay talk, talk jargon and make sure you guys are all on the same page um, right, get your security questions answered yeah and all those kinds of things exactly so I think that I think that helped a little bit Fabulous. Oh, this is such a good model. This is a framework for anybody listening and you're, <laughs> if you're going through this. This is a great framework that you've outlined here. Um, let me ask you about your pitch because uh, I know that you put a lot of thoughtful planning into that pitch to your director and, uh, and an amazing presentation. I can see the presentation <laughs> value. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. How what what did you think it was about that pitch that got him to say yes even before you left that meeting how did you do that you i guess it was the brownies <laughs> <laughs> we, oh. we practiced for months jamie put together an amazing powerpoint and practiced for months practiced with our supervisors they gave us feedback um Jamie baked brownies because we know that our CEO <laughs> happens to have a sweet tooth. Um, and as we mentioned, we had done a lot of prep work and sort of accidentally gotten the, the buzz going throughout the whole organization. So he came in. I mean, we, we showed that screenshot, that slide of all the different screenshots of the use cases that we were going to discuss with him. He actually stopped us halfway through that and said, I get it. This is valuable. Like cut to the cut to the cost. Um, so he we, we sold him pretty much on the problem and the and the idea. And then, um, you know, he said, if you can make the funding work, then then we'll then we'll give it a go. So I think it was sort of a combination of all those things. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. So it's such a good job. Um, so we've had a couple questions come in about um, about the system that you chose, and somebody's asked, "How many systems did you look at when you were doing your evaluation?" I it was like thirteen different systems. I think so. that we saw. like sort of seriously investigated. I know we saw demonstrations of eight, eight of them. Yeah, um, and I know that there were you know other ones that. I sort of scrolled through and was like, that won't work, you know, so. We're a nonprofit, so cost was a big factor. Um, there was ones that, and this is, we discovered that there was some that were really set up and geared towards the library and archives niche, some that were geared towards marketing assets and then trying to like, we need both of those and more. Mm -hmm. um, that was the, that's why the, for us, the configurability of the system we ended up picking was like such a big deal because it, we couldn't use one that was so niche for a specific industry. Yeah, and I love the way that you, like you said, you spoke to so many different departments, you made sure that it was going to be a single system for everybody <laughs> to use and that's, that's so key so well done on that. Um, brilliant if if anybody does have questions specific specifically um, for Alexis and Jamie about the system and um, that selection process. Uh, I think you've all got your, uh, your email addresses um, or you can ping them through the Hublot um, system afterwards uh, and ask some more questions. One last question before we wrap up. Um, tell us a little bit more about what's next in your implementation. You mentioned you're rolling out uh, the system to more people, but what's what's the plan? Uh, sure. Yeah. So currently, um, only like a select group of core users have um, been using the system so far, but coming up very soon, two weeks, <laughs> um, we're going to be doing a training for like our next big group of heavy users. So our whole education department. So that's exciting. Yeah. So we're really <laughs> excited about that. Um, one, I mean, obviously, like just to get more people in the system, but then get to learn more about their materials and how they anticipate people want to access them so we get to like work with them to set up what custom metadata they custom metadata fields that they need that we haven't already made and their templates and stuff like it's one of those i'm kind of such a nerd like it's a lot of work but it's going to be super cool i know and set up so and then like, 
you know, and then that'll kind of serve as a model, like once they're up and running and then we'll bring in the next, you know, <laughs> groups of materials and. Oh, I love that. And we're all nerding out with you. Don't worry. We're, <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for. Always love nice it. to be a like company. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Alexis and Jamie. You've been wonderful. And thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. Um, for everyone uh, in the audience, up next here in track two, we'll be hearing from Ingenium. And you can also head to track one for reflections from the AIU Race Center with the University of uh, Manchester Library. So see you in five minutes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.